Hello there, my name is Ismas and welcome to another Blender Daily Tip and uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, how to make this Doctor Strange a portal animation. Uh, you can see sparks flying everywhere and uh, yeah, so let's get started. Uh, we'll just open up a new blend file here. I uh, will move uh, the cube aside and then we'll just also move it away from this face. Then we can add a circle mesh, circle rotate it 90 degrees to faces. And we're not going to be using keyframes to animate this. We are going to be using drivers to animate this continuously uh, in an infinite uh, animation. So we want to animate uh, the x-axis, sorry, the y-axis. Let me just add, extrude something here so that you can see it. So we wanted to, en to animate this in this y-axis. Now, because we're not going to use an, uh, keyframes here, we can right-click on the y-axis and add a driver uh, for that so then edit driver uh, we want to animate exp we want to use an expression here to drive uh, the animation of uh, the y rotation so let's edit driver we don't need this uh, variable here so we'll just type in frame divide by two uh, what this means is that it will get the frame the current frame and divide it by two to get the value of uh, the to get the value of the rotation. Uh, so let's edit frame. Uh, make sure you don't have an error here. Uh, so if you had something like this, you'll get an error right, like this. That means that your expression is wrong and uh, it won't uh, create the animation. Uh, so uh, when it's correct and uh, working, uh, when you play back, it should give you this animation like that. Uh, to slow it down, you just have to divide it by a higher number uh, if you want it to run faster you can even try multi multiplication but i think this will be way faster than we need so that's why i want to use that's why i use a division uh, instead of uh, that so this is what we are having and you can use this expression in location and uh, everything else in any value you, you want and uh, it will still work so now that we have this, uh, we just need to start emitting uh, particles from this mesh. What I'm also going to do is extrude this along the Y axis so that we have some faces uh, to, extrude, to emit uh, the particles from. And uh, since we have our animation, I'm also going to subdivide this screen a bit and also subdivide this horizontally. Change this to a shader viewer and uh, I will set my camera here. And I can preview this in the rendered mode. I don't need the camera and uh, I don't need the light. And uh, also, let me change the background to fully black. And uh, because we're going to be emitting uh, the sparks uh, with an emission shader uh, to make them look bright or light up the scene. Uh, so now that we have everything set up, uh, let's uh, first start working on the particle system. So go to the particle settings, add a new particle system see this is what we have all the particles are just falling down so what we are going to do is uh, first go to the velocity and increase uh, the object velocity uh, that mean, this means that uh, each particle will be emitted uh, with the object velocity and since we have an angular velocity here that will also be translated to uh, the object so if I increase this you can see they start being thrown ejected out with that initial velocity and uh, yeah I don't want these particles to go to 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 have a l long lifetime uh, so i'm going to reduce the lifetime to about 10 like that and uh, maybe also increase the particle count to something like 5000 and uh, what else should we do uh i, I don't want uh, this normal velocity i want the velocity to all be coming from uh, the object velocity so i'll reduce these to zero and uh, this is what I have. Uh, obviously, if uh, uh, these particles don't render in EV, uh, so what we need is an object to replace uh, the particles. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, create a thin line like this uh, that can be rendered as those uh, particles there. Uh, so. 
if you uh, the problem is if you if uh, if if we could render or if I don't know if cycles render let me change here and see because <coughs> I don't think cycles also renders those particles it doesn't render these particles as well but uh, uh, the reason we're using let me go back to this uh, an object like this is that uh, currently blender if it doesn't render uh, motion blur so these tricks here if blender if you could render motion blur i think cycles can render motion, object motion blur so if you had just a single particle uh, and it moves from here to here uh, its motion will be rendered as motion blur and you don't have to rent, to create a particle like this uh shape like this so uh so if let me see if cycles can render motion blur because i don't think object mo motion blur I don't think it can either. Otherwise, uh, these streaks would be longer than here. And uh, if you had, uh, say, a sphere as your object, it would render it as a streak instead of a sphere. Uh, if motion object motion blur works uh, for uh, in cycles and EV, but currently I don't think they work. So that's why we have to create a particle system uh, that is in the streak form at fake uh, that motion there, that motion blur. So yeah, make a streak, an object like this, and then let's give it some thickness as well. Something, that, something like that. And I also make sure that uh, the pivot point is at the end, like that. So cursor selection, and then right click, uh, origin to 3D cursor. So that we have uh, that there. And uh, we're going to give the, this animation particle, animation shader. So And I also turn on bloom, but uh, uh, this is not strong enough or bright enough. So if you want to make it brighter, you just have to increase the value here. Let's give it a two or maybe three. Let's see, maybe I, our streak is a bit long, so I'll reduce that a bit. Now we can go into, select this object, go to the particle system and change uh, the render object uh, into render as into object and select our object here render as as object and then select this as the render object uh, so the scale is going to be very small so increase that by increasing the scale here and uh, you can see how they're scaling if they're rotated in the wrong direction we want them to be facing this direction so there are a few ways to do that you can use object rotation and uh, that will rotate the all the particles to face are uh, the rotation of the object but problem is all the particles will be facing that direction even when uh, you play back uh, which is something we don't want so um, what we're going to do is uh, go to the particle system and uh, instead of using object rotation I go to turn on rotation here and I change and change uh, the orientation to say no more let's see uh, you may have to experiment a few times and uh, you can see this is better uh, but uh, our strokes are a bit too big so i'm going to reduce the scale here and uh, this is what we have and maybe increase the brightness again here let's say four and uh, you can see the uh, the particles stop emitting at around uh, 200 so you can change the end frame here to to the length of your frame to the length of your timeline so that this is continuous and uh, yeah i think these particles are good enough so i'm going to create another particle system uh, with a slightly different settings uh, to get some variation another thing i want to do is that uh, I'll, you can offset uh, the pivot point uh, by changing by selecting all particles and moving these uh, the mesh just a little bit so that uh, the center of rotation is a bit off and uh, this will give you uh, this warping animation you can see which i think uh, is a bit becomes really cool uh, don't want it to be too much something like that is good enough and then now we can go in and create a new particle system 
uh, just use the same settings as we had before and uh, make sure when you create this particular system i uh, also duplicate other particle settings so that you don't change uh, the first particle settings make sure that uh, uh, the set the, the name here is different from uh, the name of this first one so that you don't change uh, the first settings particle system settings uh, so now we're going to increase uh, the particle settings here the count to about 1000 you can see and uh, you can also give it a slight normal speed and uh, maybe also randomize the phase a bit just change randomize the the settings just a bit to get some variation between uh, the first particle system and the second particle system you can also maybe reduce the scale just a bit and also randomize the scale and uh, let's see what else can we do play around with tangent so it's just a matter of layering more and more particles so we can also add another particle system uh, let's use the same particle settings uh, that we had here so I'll just use two and uh, you can name them so that it's easier to add uh, to track them so let me use the same 30,000 And see and uh, again maybe let's reduce uh, the scale here this time around let me reduce uh, the, the object velocity and let's see what else can we do you can also try reducing the gravity or increase it let's see if we double the gravitational force by typing in two yeah, so it's just a matter of layering and re layering more and more particle systems uh, so you can see in my you can see I have about three particle systems that I used uh, and if you go to the particle settings you can see yeah that's what I did and uh, I also what I did I gave this uh, emitter uh, the same material as the same emissive material and I uh, also extruded it a bit so something like this, just select this outer ring, then extrude, extrude that just to be to have that ring there. And uh, now can even make it even larger. You can see, and you can layer more and more stuff onto there. And, uh, yeah, you can get better results uh, like that. Yeah, thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe to my Instagram channel for more advanced tutorials. I'll be leaving a link in the description. Thank you.